Hi everyone, this is Erica from Gokche Capital and today we're going over buying land without mineral rights and the 11 things you must know first before you purchase a property without mineral rights. So broadly speaking, there are two kinds of rights that we're talking about here. There are the surface rights to the property and the mineral rights. Now, surface rights are, as the name would suggest, rights to the land's surface. And this can include just about everything you would think you may need for most normal uses of the property. So that includes improvements like homes, buildings, any kind of structure, crops. And it also generally includes rights to subsurface water. Although not the purpose of this presentation, but in some states, water rights are their own separate rights regime. We're not going into that here, but uh, the mineral rights owner generally does not own the subsurface water. What surface rights do not do is give you the right to extract any minerals that are under the ground. So that's what mineral rights are. Mineral rights are the right to explore for and extract underground minerals, including oil, natural gas, coal, precious and non-precious metals, uh, and other solid materials. But what this actually means can vary a little bit from state to state. So some states have a different definition of mineral than other states, and some states may have separate rules for oil and gas versus solid materials like precious metals. So if you are looking at mineral rights seriously, you may just want to double check what the definition is in your state. Also, surface minerals such as gravel and sand, in some cases even limestone, may be held by the surface rights owner. So this is another thing to look up in your particular state. Now, in the U.S., mineral rights are often separated from surface rights. So, to start out, the surface rights and the mineral rights are combined, but over the course of time, they often become separated for any particular property. So, what this means is it's very common to buy property or more specifically, the surface rights to a property without the mineral rights. Now, this does not mean your land is worthless. Like I said, it is common for this situation to exist. And in much of the US, it is not necessarily that big of a deal because there will be no minerals of value under the parcel. So, for example, if you're buying a home in a suburb close to a city, mineral rights probably aren't going to come into play at all. But as I was saying, mineral rights can be completely separate, be under completely separate ownership from the surface rights, and they can also have multiple owners or fractured ownership. So what this means is just like with a house or the surface rights to any regular property, you can have multiple people holding title as the mineral rights owner, and you can also have multiple people owning different percentages of the mineral rights. So mineral rights can get complicated. And this is especially true if there's been um, a long time since anything has happened with the mineral rights and ownership has become heavily fractured. Now, one thing to note is that in some states, there is a way for mineral rights to revert back to the surface rights holder if they are held by someone else. This is going to vary from state to state, and it is not a simple process. Generally, you need to prove that nothing has been done with the mineral rights, including transfer of ownership for an extended period of time. So it, it's not an easy process to go through, but 
if you are buying property without mineral rights and you are really, really interested in trying to get them back, this is one avenue you could potentially explore depending on the state you're in. Now, another important thing to know if you're buying a parcel of land and you are not getting the mineral rights is that mineral rights holders do actually have some surface rights. And basically they have rights that they would need in order to explore or extract, explore for or extract minerals. So that is right to access the property and also right to place equipment on the property. Now how these rights interact with your rights as surface owner can also vary from state by state. It's important to note that you are often entitled to some kind of compensation, or at the very least, even if you are not legally entitled to it, if someone is going, if the mineral rights holder, should I say, is going to come in and try to explore for extract minerals on your property, they are probably first going to reach out to you and try to come to some kind of agreement, which usually includes some kind of compensation. But it's important to note that in the majority of states you are not going to be able to go to court and try to block them from accessing your property or exploring or extracting if they are the true mineral rights holder. It can also be hard to actually figure out who owns the mineral rights. This is because mineral rights and surface rights are often separated or were often separated from each other many, many years ago. And the current holder of the mineral rights may not even know that they own them. Uh, another thing that complicates matters is that deeds often do not explic explicitly state the mineral rights status. So it can be tricky to go back through the records and try to figure out where the mineral rights and the surface rights were separated and then who actually now owns the mineral rights. So just in general, unless your deed explicitly says you own the mineral rights or you don't, uh, you are going to want to hire a title company or an abstract company to do a mineral rights search. You can do a search yourself through county records but as I mentioned, it can be very difficult to actually follow the trail to the current mineral rights owner. So the easiest thing is just to hire a title company to do it. Now, mineral rights can be profitable if you own them and you are not actually interested or able to extract any minerals yourself. You can sell the mineral rights. You can also lease them to a company. Or again, you could try to extract any minerals yourself. But of course, the actual value of those rights is going to vary. As you can imagine, a property that is not expected to have any minerals of value is, is not going to have a high price for its mineral rights versus a property in an area where there is a lot of known exploration extraction taking place already that's probably going to be worth a whole lot more so at the end of the day mineral rights are worth as much as someone is willing to pay and they are not like a house or a vacant parcel of land where it's easy to look up comps and figure out what you think the market prices. The price for mineral rights varies varies uh, across the board and it can also change rapidly depending on what's going on in the area and what um, the minerals that you would be extracted are selling for in the marketplace. So you're going to want to check with a local agent or lawyer if you own the mineral rights and are looking to sell them. And now the big takeaway here is really, do you want to buy land if you are not getting the mineral rights with it? Now this is a difficult question and it's going to depend a lot on your own due diligence, what you are looking to do with the property and also where the property is located. 
in our opinion, the primary question is first whether there is actually a history of mineral extraction in an area. As I mentioned, a lot of parcels in the U.S. have no minerals of value under them, so the question of mineral rights is somewhat of a moot point. Um, so if you're looking at land and there is really no mineral extraction going on anywhere in the nearby vicinity, then maybe it's not, it's probably not such a big deal that you don't have mineral rights. And I will say that we purchase properties assuming that we're not getting mineral rights all the time, but that's because we purchase properties that are small in size and that are also not located in areas where there are a lot of minerals or underground natural resources. But there are a few other questions you can ask yourself, especially if you think that there may be some likelihood that there are actually minerals under the property. So one is, how much do you want to spend for the property? Often, a property that comes with mineral rights is going to cost more than one that doesn't. Also, what is available on the market? Because it's more and more common these days for properties to have a split estate or to have the surface rights and the mineral rights under separate ownership, it may actually be difficult to find a property that comes with mineral rights. Especially if you are very set on a certain location or set characteristics. So you may not have an option, you may just have to buy without mineral rights. Uh, it's also worth, if you're really concerned, asking local experts, brokers, lawyers, whether they think that the mineral rights are very important when purchasing. And then of course, another big question is what do you want to do with the property? So if you are in an area where you think there may be a chance that there are minerals under the ground, Mineral rights may actually be may way more important for you if you are looking to set up a homestead or live permanently on the land or grow crops. Do anything where uh, your livelihood or your life could be significantly impacted if someone does decide to explore on your property. All right, so that's it for now. If you're not familiar with us, again, I am Erica. My company is Gokche Capital. We buy and sell vacant land. You can find us at gokchecapital.com. Check out our listings and our new land investing program, as well as our free land giveaway. And if you think that I missed anything important, please leave a comment on this video. So thank you for listening and more to come.